Today, I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know about farming flame metal in the new Valheim Ashlands update. Let's get to it. So the other day, I put out a video talking about the new siege weapons and how the catapult was basically useless. And in that video, you all hit me with a ton of comments saying, no, the catapult isn't useless. It's used for farming flame metal. And no, you're wrong. That's a terrible idea. Not only is this a situation where when you are in the Ashlands, you are constantly getting attacked by different monsters. So trying to position position a catapult in order to hit a thin pillar of metal will be an absolute pain in the butt. You also are going to waste a bunch of resources trying to just line up the hits in the first place. And on top of that, if the thing is working proper, and I'll explain what I mean by that here in a second, if you were to be able to harvest it with a catapult, the trigger for it sinking is based off total amount of damage done. And that amount of damage is not much in order to trigger to start sinking. So unless you're going to manage to set up 360 degrees of catapult, catapults around the pillar so you can hit all sides of it at once and manage to line them up without damaging it at all in the first place so you don't trigger it to sink. It's an extremely inefficient process. I don't know where people got this idea from. I don't know if it was talked about in the discord and got spread around or if somebody made a video, but it's terrible. Now let's take a look at why it's probably also a bug. So in the current version of the beta, if you fire a catapult, sure, some of the chunks will break off if you use the explosive round. You have to use the explosive round Round, any other rounds won't cause any chunks to break off. It tells you that the structure is too hard. And if you hit the lower parts of it now, I don't know if this was that way before, but it is like this currently. If you hit the lower parts of it, they never break because it just tells you the structure is too hard. But as I stated, I was able to actually break some chunks of this off and deal about 500 damage when doing so. This also did not trigger it to sink for some reason, I guess because the chunks aren't actually supposed to be broken off and the damage isn't actually being done to trigger it. Let's take a look at the mechanics of how this thing works. So this thing is a Leviathan. It is considered an entity. It operates just like the Leviathans that you encounter in the ocean. The trigger for it, as I stated, is damage based. As you can see here, I'm going around and I'm hitting one little chunk at a time, not breaking any of the chunks. And then after a given point of time, about 150 ish, 200 damage from what I can tell is when it activates. And then you have a period of time before it starts to sink. And as you can see, from the clip, you got about 25 seconds from the time that it is triggered until the time that it actually starts to sink. Once it starts to sink, it's kind of slow and then it rapidly increases as it gets lower and lower. I spawned in three of these and harvested them completely to get an idea of how much flame metal each of these pillars actually has on them. And as you can see here on the screen, split between these three chests are three different harvests and it's around 90-ish. Sometimes you get a little over 90, sometimes you get a little less than 90. The reason that this is important to know is because when you actually do harvest a pillar, you can take a look at what you were able to harvest from it. And knowing that your average is about 90, you can do a little bit of math and know the total percentage you were able to harvest. So before we get into the best way to go about harvesting flame metal from the pillars, I want to talk about how you can get a decent amount of it enough to get you started on your Ashlands adventure and probably more than you're going to need unless you decide to start building with the flame metal pillars and beams. Fortresses are relatively easy to raid, especially if you are specced as a mage. You can easily clear out everything around them and then siege them from the side, from a distance, building a simple set of stairs up to the edge. I cover this in much more detail in my ultimate guide part one, but essentially that's all you really have to do. You don't need anything crazy to accomplish taking over a fortress and you can do it relatively early on in your adventures with all of the gear that you have gotten from the Mistlands. Each of these fortresses carries a decent amount of flame metal, more than enough to get you building a couple of the weapons or even the armor. You can see from the videos that have been playing on the screen that these fortresses can contain multiple chests and in each of the chests are anywhere from 10 to 30 flame metal. Raiding two of these fortresses is safer than trying to harvest flame metal and can easily net you as much as harvesting one flame metal node. Your average map should have somewhere around 20, give or take a little fortresses on it. Assuming that each fortress has about 30 ore in it, and we do a little bit of math there, that is 600 ore that you can get from just fortresses alone. And as flame metal is a one-to-one, -one, that is 600 flame metal ingots just doing fortresses. But Firespark, I hear you say, I got an insatiable appetite for all of the flame metal ore, and I must harvest those nodes. Okay, okay. I'll show you how to harvest them, and it's pretty easy to do. 
But before we do that, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor for today, G Portal. Dive into top tier gaming with G Portal, fast, reliable, and ready for action. Experience instant setup, 24 seven support, and unbeatable performance. Their intuitive UI makes it extremely easy to get your server up and running fast. And with competitive prices, you can be sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. Join G Portal today by clicking my link down in the description for 10% off your first month. Before you even think about heading over there to harvest one of these pillars, you need to make sure that you're prepared. Otherwise, you're just gonna die and then you're gonna be very angry about it and you're gonna cry and it's not gonna be good. For your special ability, you wanna make sure you have the queen's power equipped because you're gonna activate it when you go to harvest the node. This is going to significantly increase how quickly you can tear this node down. In most cases, if you have a maxed out black metal pickaxe, which is the other thing you wanna make sure you have, so make sure you have a maxed out black metal pickaxe, you should only need to hit each chunk about two times to break it. Without having this buff active, you will have to hit most of the nodes three times in order to break them. So this not only saves you time, it also saves you stamina. The other thing you wanna do is make sure you eat plenty of good stamina food. You don't wanna go into doing this and be constantly running out of stamina. I can harvest these with one good stamina food and two eider foods, so you should be able to do it with a good stamina food and two health foods, but two stamina foods and one health food would be even better. Health ain't gonna do you a lot of good if you fall into the lava, you're dying either way. The other thing you wanna make sure you have is anywhere from 10 to just a full stack of the basalt bombs. Next, you also need a shield generator. And last but not least, you need a tamed lava dog. You can probably do this without the tamed lava dog, but it's gonna be an absolute pain in the butt and you're gonna need a ton of basalt bombs in order to pick the stuff up off the ground. And yeah, it's probably just better to have a tamed lava dog. Okay, you have all the stuff now, it's time to head over to the Ashlands and find one of these flame metal pillars. The first thing you want to do is place down your shield generator as close to the lava as you can get it without placing it into the lava so that as much, if not all, of the flame metal pillar is inside the shield generator. The reason you want to do this is because the shield generator protects you from the lava's homing missiles that it fires at you. And I know they're not exactly homing missiles, but sometimes it feels like it because when it bubbles and pops around you and pops those little things up, they sure seem to hit you very easily. This prevents that from happening and allows you to easily harvest the node without worrying about getting knocked off of one of your basalt pillars or knocked off the Leviathan itself. Probably a good idea to also place down a portal close by just in case you do die so you can get back quick and easy. Next, you wanna make your way over to the pillar. Once you are at the base of it, activate the queen's power and start working your way around the base of it, ensuring that you are steadily harvesting and not blowing all of your stamina. You want to clear out the bottom of it as fast as possible. Now, the middle of it, the chunks run all the way down to the bottom as well, so you can also clear out the middle of it relatively easy from the bottom. After that point, it's probably going to start to sink. Once it does this, you want to start throwing your basalt bombs around the edges of it. This should cause pillars to pop up around it, giving you a platform to work from. Then, as it starts to sink, you want to just jump on your pillars and continue to knock the edges off of it as they float past you. If you do all of this right, and it does take a little bit of practice, and I'll tell you how to practice here in a minute, if you do it all right, you should be able to get about 95 to 100% of this thing, depending on the situation that you're in, because there's a lot of variables here. Now, once you are all done, there is going to be a ton of flame metal floating on top of the lava all over the place. How do you go about getting it? Well, as I stated, you can throw basalt bombs and try to pick it up, try to get close enough to it, but those basalt pillars are a little slippery on the edges and you can fall in the lava. The easiest way to go about doing this is to just go get on your lava dog and ride it around in the lava. They are immune to the lava. Now, if there is a fiery patch and you run them through it, they will catch on fire, but they seem to be relatively resistant. And if the lava fires little lava bombs at you like it likes to do if you are outside the shield generator area, uh, that can also hit you and hit your lava dog. But if you're inside the shield generator and you just wander around, you will pick up the pieces of flame metal. It's a little jank. I find it best to just find a grouping of it and then do a tight circle around the grouping of it until you've picked up a bunch of it. And then you can just take it back to the edge and put it in a chest or throw it down and then pick it all up at once. However, you want to go about getting it back to your base. But the lava dog I found is the best method. Now, I mentioned practicing because it's probably a good idea to practice doing this to get good at it. I noticed that after about the third or fourth time of doing this, I got much better at it than I initially 
initially started with. If you don't want to screw up your main character, I advise you to activate the dev commands. You can do this by going into your launch options and putting dash console in your launch options. And then once you are in the game, you hit F5 and type dev commands. It's gonna give you a warning, just ignore it. Then you wanna type in debug mode. Once you've done that, you should be able to hit the letter B on your keyboard. This will allow you to craft anything for free and upgrade everything for free so you can get you a black metal pickaxe and fully upgrade it. Next, you wanna hit F5 and type spawn, base, and then Leviathan lava, all one word. This will spawn a lava Leviathan. It works just like it does over in the Ashlands. The only difference is, is you can spawn it wherever you want, preferably the meadows, so you can safely practice harvesting it. In order to give yourself the queen buff, you want to type add status, all one word, space, queen, then hit tab, and then enter. Once you have done this and you've practiced harvesting it in the comfort of the meadows biome, you can then head over and practice harvesting it in the actual Ashlands biome. I advise before doing so though, ensuring that you once again hit F5 and type in God and then hit enter and then type ghost and then hit enter. This will stop things from attacking you over there and when you do fall in the lava, you won't die. You'll just go down the one hit point. Once you've gotten good at it, you can safely go back to your main character without fear of dying and losing a bunch of skill points. Okay, hopefully you all found this video helpful and informational. If you did, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Valheim content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.